Previously on Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. And now, our hero's journey continues. Well guys, I don't know how that happened, but somehow, in a stroke of luck, I was able to defeat Raido Kuzanoa without using buffs. And thankfully, after that, we're done with the Kalpa. We listen to Lucifer give another speech yet again, and then get back to the surface where we have to speak to Hijiri and find out we have to go to the Amala network once again. Oh, but one thing you should note before you go is that the majority of enemies here are very low level, so I highly recommend you bring Estoma with you. Thankfully, with Estoma, this dungeon is pretty short and easy. We have to fight seven specters as a boss at the end. Now, the key to this fight is to beat them down before they can cast Megiddo. They start off without enough MP, but they do use Mana Drain. But because of Dark Might, we can keep attacking, and the ones we don't kill, we can drain with Daisojo's Meditation. Still though, it is kind of challenging given that there are seven of them, but if you're smart enough, you can beat them easily, which we do after a couple of attempts. After the boss, we meet Isamu, who tells us about his reason, go to the Mantra HQ to learn Hikawa's reason, and then go visit the mannequins in Mifunashiro. And then after that, it's back to Asakusa, where we find that the previously blocked path is now open, and in it, there's another fiend fight. But there's something I need to do in here first. Remember that mannequin that was standing in front of the rubble earlier? Well, he now has a shop, and in here he carries some Magatama that are really going to help me throughout the rest of this run. Right now I can only get the Vimana Magatama, which I need for Endure and Life Surge. It does cost me over 200,000 Maka, but at least I'm able to get 50,000 of it back by selling the Spyglass. If you're curious about what that does, it basically gives you an infinite use of Analyze, but I mean, if you have a computer or a smartphone, or in 2004 the SMT Nocturne Guidebook, you really don't need it. As usual, I wait for the next full moon, and then attempt the next fiend. The last of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Pale Rider. This fight is kinda difficult, but surprisingly easier than I was expecting. Pale Rider's gimmick is that he gives the party ailments, and then kills you with them. His minions are Loa's, which have Debilitate, which is the most threatening skill this boss has, because that's the skill that lowers all of our stats, but they also have Hellgaze and Dorima. Now, Pale Rider himself has Mabufu Dine for an elemental attack, Eternal Rest, which kills all sleeping targets, and Blight, which deals physical damage and has a chance to poison. His signature move, though, is Pestilence, which is a medium almighty attack that kills any poison targets. As you've probably been able to figure out, the whole challenge of this fight is that the Loas put ailments on you, and then Pale Rider uses his own moves to kill you. But because the party is immune to pretty much all ailments, this isn't a problem. Instead, he spams Mabufu Dine, which unfortunately my party doesn't resist, and after a couple of debilitates, it can kill us pretty easily. And this is how he beats us on the first couple of attempts. However, after like the third or fourth attempt, maybe he felt bad about using debilitate because his Loas don't seem to go for it anymore. Instead, they seem to favor going for Dorima, which the entire party resists, including Daisojo who drains it, which costs him his turns. I also use some of my magic mirrors to prevent him from using Mabufu Dine, and when I do this, he instead goes for Pestilence, but it hardly does any damage at all. Other than this, well, I think you know the drill by now. Just keep attacking with Dark Might until he's dead. He doesn't really seem to have that much HP as I bring him to his low health animation after just a few turns, and a few more turns later he goes down, leaving me to finish off his minions and concluding the final rider battle. Next on our quest is to go to Yoyogi Park, which we get to by going through another tunnel. <sighs> Once we get there, we meet Takao, and in order to save her, we have to get through this dungeon. And let me tell you, this dungeon is really annoying. It's designed like a maze where if you go through the wrong door, you get teleported out by the pixies. It's not a bad dungeon, but the encounter rate is insanely high, and it just goes on way longer than it needs to. 
I finally make it to the end where I meet Sakahagi, who makes us fight Giramikala. Now, if you've played any other Mega Ten game, you should know that Giramikala in pretty much every installment blocks or reflects physical attacks. That is a major problem for me since my party is built around physical attacks. So really all I can do is just scrape up any magic that I have and hit him with that. He doesn't have any exploitable weaknesses and he likes to go for buffs himself. Thankfully his attacks don't do a lot, even with the buffs he can't really do any threatening damage to us, but I still cancel his buffs just to be safe. He also likes to throw away his turns by spamming Panic Voice, which again everyone except Barreth knows, and I can just use Prayer to cure it. Hellbiker sadly does go down after some physical hits, but we're still good without him. Just chip away at his health until we deal enough damage to bring him down. Immediately after Garamikala, we then have to fight Sakahagi, who is thankfully a complete joke of a boss. His attacks aren't strong, he barely has any health, and goes down after just a couple of divine shots. With him out of the way, I talk to Mr. Cow again, who tells us more about her reason, and this opens up another fiend fight, Mother Harlot. Now, Mother Harlot may look threatening on paper, but she's actually probably the easiest fiend in the game, mainly because of her bad AI. What makes her look so threatening is that she's the only fiend that reflects physical attacks, but she doesn't have any strong moves. Her signature almighty move, Beast Roar, doesn't do much, and she also has two ailment moves, which, again, doesn't affect my party, and her only elemental attacks are electric type. She also has a physical attack that hits seven times, but it doesn't really seem to do much more than any normal attack, even if she uses focus. Because of her physical immunity, there's really no point in waiting for a new moon to fight her, and it just kind of goes the same way as the Giramakala fight. Just hit her with whatever little damage we can until she goes down. And also, just like Giramakala, she keeps tossing her turns by using ailment moves. Her Beast Roar attack, which she doesn't use very often, does heal her, but only by a tiny bit. This fight drags on, and I lose track of how many turns it takes, but without any real difficulty, we're able to beat Mother Harlot on our first attempt. With Mother Harlot out of the way, there is only one more fiend left. But before I move on, there are some optional bosses that I want to get out of the way. The first one is good old Mara, making his long-awaited appearance. That's right, he can't be summoned as a demon, but in SMT Nocturne, Mara becomes available to fight after you beat Sakahagi. You find him by going to the outside arena of Shibuya, and in a super secret spot behind one of the buildings, you'll find two mannequins trying to get Baphomet to summon a strong demon. If you tell him to hurry the ritual up, he'll summon him. Well, kinda. Mara actually appears in this slimy form because the ritual was rushed. He doesn't like this, so he gets mad and attacks us. Now, Mara is kind of a weird boss. He can either be really easy or next to impossible depending on how you approach it. Because of my party's build, it's gonna be somewhere in between. He'll spend most of the battle spamming ailment moves like Makajama on or Dismal Toon, which, you know, to me, does absolutely nothing. He also doesn't have a lot of health, with him only having 2300 HP. Sounds easy, right? Well, here's the kicker. Mara is the only boss fight in the game that can regularly use Diarahan. Not Dia, not Diarama, Diarahan, the skill that heals you fully. And it's not like some special situation where he's only programmed to use it once per battle or use it if certain conditions have been met. He can use it whenever he feels like it. He also doesn't have a weakness, so it's not like there's anything you can exploit for more guaranteed press turns. The way you're supposed to beat him is just by buffing your attack and debuffing his defense and then finishing him off with a couple of focused attacks. I can't do that. Without buffs or debuffs, I'm only doing a few hundred damage each turn, but thankfully there is another way to beat him. You might remember how I beat Mizuchi, how three quarters of the way into the battle he ran out of MP. Well, the only way I can beat Mara without buffing or debuffing is by doing the same thing, spamming meditation with Daisojo and just waiting for him to run out of MP. Once he runs out of MP, he can no longer cast Diarahan on himself. I should also mention that contradictory to what I said earlier about him only having weak attacks, well, he does have one strong attack, and that is Hades Blast. You'll probably think this fight is a complete joke until he one-shots your entire party with this move. When he uses this, it's almost a guaranteed critical hit, and if you don't have any physical resistance, 
you're probably going to die. This is the main reason I waited till now to do this fight. But now my party can survive it, and he can't really do much to me. This whole fight is basically just one big stalling contest until he runs out of MP. All I can do is just keep spamming meditation until he's out. When he's not healing, he's wasting most of his turns going for Dismal Tune or Makajama on, and when I do get hit with the occasional Hades Blast, I just prayer it off. In total, I think this fight goes on for like 15 to 20 minutes, but it does work. After god knows how many turns, Mar tries to heal himself and fails, and now we can finally finish him off. And let me tell you, this is one of the most satisfying feelings I've felt while playing this game. Finally getting to wail on the boss while he tries to heal in vain, it's just... Ah, it's just so rewarding. So after that, we get back to the Mantra HQ, Chiaki finds a reason, transforms, and then... Get this. So, in this game, the Mantra basically represent chaos, you know, survival of the fittest. Well, the ones that take her side are the angels. Yeah, the ones that usually represent law, which is all about peace and equality and whatnot. I don't know, maybe after a left beat record scratch in SMT2, they were just like, screw it, we're going chaos now. Now, the other optional boss I wanted to fight was Black Frost. Thankfully, this one doesn't have Diorahan, but he does have Diorama and he resists physical attacks, which, you know, makes things so much better. But other than that, this fight is pretty easy. If you either Null Dark or have Tetraja and block Ice, there's really not much he can do to you. His only physical attack is Berserk, which is one of the worst skills in the game. This is just another one of those use whatever magic I can until he's dead fights, and once we beat him, we get the Satan Magatama. Now, it's time to get back to the story. Back in Asakusa, we see Hijiri, who tells us to go to the Amala Network one last time to look for Isamu. So we go in, find him, but we gotta fight that stupid specter again. Once I destroy him with ease, we're in the new area, the Amala Temple. Now, this place is divided into three smaller temples, which you can do in any order, and at the end of which, you fight a boss. The first one I choose to do is the Black Temple, where the boss is Alciel. This is probably one of the most unfair bosses in the game. I mean, he's not that hard, but he likes to do three things. The first thing being that he uses Dragon Eye and then spams Mana Drain. The second being just normally attacking and using Tempest. But the third thing, and what makes this fight so unfair, is that he has a move called Soul... Um, uh, you know, I'm just going to call it Black Sun since that's what it means in Latin. So what this skill does is it's an almighty attack that automatically gets everyone in the party's HP down to 1, and he usually follows this up with a normal attack. If he uses this and then attacks Demi Fiend, it's game over, and that's exactly what happens on my first attempt. Twice. Because Demi Fiend survives the first time thanks to Endure, but after that he does it again and kills him. Before the next attempt, I decide to grind a bit while waiting for the next full moon, and while doing so, Demi Fiend learns life gain from the Kamurogi Magatama. Now, under normal circumstances, because I already have life bonus, I would just replace it with life gain. But without defense buffs, I'm going to need all the HP I can get for future bosses. One thing that's cool about these skills is that they multiply on top of one another. So instead of a 30% health boost, I actually have a 32% health boost. And once I get Life Surge, it'll be a 71% health boost. Anyway, the next attempt goes great. The strategy is the same, but I have more crits and I get much luckier. He also has a ton of HP, but the fight doesn't take too long thanks to our critical hits. Before long, LCL goes down. Now on to the White Temple, where the boss is Albion. Now, this has to be one of the most annoying bosses in the game. This thing has four minions, so naturally I start by killing the minions, but he just revives them, so when I try to kill him, his minions revive him. Guess what? You have to kill him and the last of his minions on the same turn. So what you gotta do is get them down to just the right amount, and then deliver the final blow. That is a pain in the Mara, but thankfully it's not that hard. He doesn't have any strong attacks, and the AI is pretty dumb, so we're able to beat him on our first try. Alright, one more boss, this time in the Red Temple, where the boss is Scotty, who drains physical, so all I can do is spam prominence with White Rider. 
Her Earthquake hits like a truck, but thankfully she has almost no HP at all and goes down before she can use it a second time. After that, we enter the Central Temple, where we see Hijiri being captured by Isamu and sacrifices him to summon his reason god, Noah. Then, we have to go down to Mifunashiro again, where we see that the angels have gone through and beat up all the mannequins, and then we fight Futomimi at the end. And he's a complete joke of a boss. He's weak as a twig, he has dumb AI, and we beat him on our first try after just a couple of turns. After that, we then have to go to Yurikucho Station, and once we arrive, we see the menorah flickering, meaning that this is where we fight the ninth and final fiend. And that fiend is Trumpeter. Now, Trumpeter is commonly considered one of the hardest fiends, but I've never actually had that much of a problem with him before, though I feel that because of this challenge, that's going to be a little different. He has Megidolon, which we can do absolutely nothing about, but he also has all elemental magic, with Miragi dying seeming to be his favorite move to use. He also likes to use his normal attack for some reason, which he only seems to do on Giramakala. You know, I'm really beginning to question how the AI in this game was programmed. Anyway, even with Megidolon, he doesn't do that much damage, and doesn't really put up much of a fight. He also has no resistances, which makes damaging him much easier. My basic strategy is, you know, Dark Mind Attack with White Rider and Giramakala, Heal with Dai Sojo, and Focus Divine Shot with Demifiend. This goes great, and before long I get him to low health, but then he pulls out his trump card. That skill that he used in the beginning, Holy Melody, well, that fully restores HP and MP to the combatant with the lowest HP. And the way it works is by percentage, not by actual numbers. But yeah, you probably already know where this is going. Just when I'm about to go for the big finish, the worst thing possible happens. Garamakala misses his attack, and then Trumpeter goes for Holy Melody, fully restoring his HP and MP, erasing all the progress I made up until that point. This literally restarts the battle, and it makes me rage quit. I mean, there's no reason not to, he's back at the same amount of health he had when the fight started, yet I'm still beat up and low on HP and MP. So the best thing to do is just reset the game and try again. For attempt number two, it's the same strategy, but he does one thing that completely screws me over. His other signature move is Evil Melody. This attack instantly kills the combatant with the lowest HP, which for some reason is Demifiend. I should also mention that this move is almighty, so it doesn't matter if you know death or not. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. Not even Tetraja works. Now, the move itself doesn't kill Demifiend because he has Endure, but he immediately follows that up with a Megidolon, which kills him and ends the game. Attempt number three seems to be the charm, though. He goes for elemental magic a lot more, especially Miragidine, and I even get a few lucky criticals on him. I really start to get worried once he gets into his low health animation because I'm not exactly sure how close to death he is. He does use Evil Melody at one point in the battle, but thankfully it hits White Rider. But that still means I'm down a party member. I'm not sure how close to death he is at this point, but summoning a new demon would take up turns I'm not willing to risk. So with my three demons, I go all out. And with my Divine Shot, I do just enough to finish him off. And with that, the battle is won. We have defeated all the fiends. Now that all the fiends are out of the way, I feel like I just got a huge weight off my shoulders. But we're not done with the game just yet. I go through Yurikucho Station to the Diet Building, which is Hikawa's base of operations. But before I go any further, I do have a few extra things to do. The first being an optional boss fight with Bishamon, a painfully easy boss whom beating gives you the Gundari Magatama. This Magatama contains Spiral Viper, which will be our best physical skill until we can get Frey Google. Next, I go back to the Mantra HQ. You know that door that says you're not strong enough to open it and it won't let you in? Well, if you have over 24 strength, you can open it, and it has the Gaia Magatama inside. Alright, now back to the Diet Building. This dungeon is pretty simple in terms of design. It's kinda like a network of hallways with fake doors, but they're really easy to spot. 
However, the mid-bosses are a different story, and by mid-bosses I actually mean one of them. This boss is none other than Mott. Rather than explain what makes him difficult to you, I'm just gonna show you this clip from my friend Shadow Elite HD. Okay, fair enough. Dead. Why is he not dead? And he's taking off his debuffs. I don't have any MP left. Are you gonna use B side again? How are you using B side twice? No! Why are you using it again? What the f is going on here, B? What the f? What? What the f? No! What the f is going on right now? What? Yo, what is, do y'all see this? Do, nah, do y'all see this right now? What is happening? Dodge! Everybody dodge! Oh my god. Oh my god. No! What kind of fraud is this? Okay, now nah, I'm still here. We still out here, baby. We ain't dead yet. Let's go. Alright, we ain't scared of you. We ain't scared of you. From watching that clip, you can probably only imagine what this fight is going to be like without buffs. If he uses enough Makakajas and Orgos for double Megi Dolan, it's pretty much going to be game over. So anyway, this boss is weak to electricity, but the only demon with an electric attack that I have is Gear Mikalo with Shock, which is one of the worst magic moves in the game. Demi Fiend and White Rider literally cannot hit him with anything, because even if I do use physical attacks, he has Avenge, which will deal four times the amount of damage I do to him if he gets it. This fight is another one of those that just stall, stall, and stall some more while Gira McCall and Daisojo chip away at him with whatever magic they have, while praying to Kagutsuji that he doesn't use Megidolon or Beast Eye too much. Surprisingly, most turns he actually doesn't go for Beast Eye that much. It's usually just Makakaja followed by Megidolon. There is one turn where he uses Beast Eye four times, but then he uses Tempest, which cost him literally all those extra turns that he got which is honestly kind of funny. Oh, and you want to know how I win? Well, at one point he goes for the double Megi Dolan, which kills both Daisojo and White Rider, and at this point in the fight I'm contemplating resetting the game, but I decide to see how long I can hold out and get this. The next turn he goes for Tempest again, which reflects off Garamakala and makes him kill himself. I don't know what kind of luck I got that carried me through that fight. I mean, part of me was afraid that fight was going to be the end of the run, but somehow I was able to beat Mott without buffs or debuffs on my first attempt. And it's all thanks to Garamakala. I really love this big guy. After that, we have to fight another really easy mid-boss, but then we get to the main boss, one of my favorite demons in all of Megaton, Samael. Now, thankfully, Samael doesn't resist physical, but he does have retaliate, so every time we hit him, there is a good chance he'll hit back, but at least it's not as strong as Avenge. He also likes to use Beast Eye, after which he'll always use two Raku Kajas. What makes this fight difficult, though, is his God's Curse attack, which inflicts random ailments to everyone. It doesn't affect White Rider or Daisojo, but because I don't have the right Magatama on Demi Fiend, he and Garamakala are still vulnerable. Now, in most cases, Daisojo can just heal them, but because Demi Fiend moves first, he still gets affected. So, the fight seemingly goes smoothly, but with the second hit of God's Hearse, Demi Fiend gets panicked and drops 40,000 Maka. So, you know what that means? Yep, rage quit the fight and try again. Unfortunately, I don't have any Magatama that null all ailments, I can only null a third of them, so I decide to give Demi Fiend the null Mind Magatama, because Paralyze, Poison, and Mute I can deal with, but Panic and Charm? Well, you already saw what that did. Thankfully, it works, and this Magatama proves to be a game changer. The strategy here is Divine Shot, Dekaja, Prayer, Dark Might, Focus, Dark Might, then Meditation. It's not like I need to change my strategy that often because he does the same thing every turn, which is God's Curse, Beast Eye, and Double Raku Kaja. Without having to worry about ailments, this fight is a cinch, and it doesn't take long before we defeat Samael. After the fight, we see Hikawa become one with Ahriman, and now the final dungeon is open, the Tower of Kagutsuchi. But first, now that I'm level 70, 
I'm now going to attempt the fourth Kalpa and also going to create an extra save file just in case. Now, before we can start the fourth Kalpa, we have to go back through the third. On the way down, we meet Black Frost, who joins us without our consent. But that's okay, because he has the potential to become a great demon. He doesn't have the best moveset to start, but he does have good stats, and we can teach him our own moves via Matama Fusion. Anyway, we get down to the fourth Kalpa, light the menorahs, and continue our descent. Now, as soon as you set foot into the fourth Kalpa, you'll immediately notice that this whole place has the same effect as that cursed hallway from the second Kalpa. If you go to the right, you'll find 50,000 Maka and a Death Stone. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to head back out to the Cathedral of Shadows so that I can fuse Mother Harlot, which I can do now because I have a Death Stone, and I'm level 70 and Mother Harlot is level 69. But in all seriousness, Mother Harlot is the best fiend in the game without doubt. Main reason being is that she innately reflects physical attacks. Once I have her, I go back and continue the dungeon as normal. Now, the fourth Kalpa does have a few notable treasures in it. There's a shady broker that'll sell you a Mothman with all heavy elemental attacks, which I don't really need, and then there's this portal that leads you into a different place depending on the moon phase. In one of them, there's an old man who has a dialogue option that you have to let sit for three minutes before you answer, and then he'll let you into a room with 100,001 Maka and two Death Stones. There's also this one area that you can only access by getting this thing called the Afterlife Bell, which requires you to do a whole bunch of backtracking and it gives you two demons, but honestly, it's not worth it in my opinion. Now, if you go through the portal during a new moon, it'll take you to Hell's Hall, which is another cursed hallway and is also where the main boss lurks. One of the most infamous demons in the entire franchise, Beelzebub, who we have to fight before we can move on. Now, the first thing I'm going to say about Beelzebub, don't even attempt this fight unless your entire party nulls death. Beelzebub's signature move is Death Flies, which will kill anyone that doesn't null death. Did I also mention that it's also the strongest almighty attack in the game? So even if you don't die instantly, you're still going to take a whole lot of almighty damage. Though, he doesn't use this at first. He kinda goes easy on you in the beginning, only using attack and elemental magic, but after the next few hits, he starts to get serious. With his two turns, he likes to use Death Flies followed by Megi Dolan. He is also resistant to everything in the game except fire. Now, based on what I've said, you must think that this is the hardest boss fight ever and that it took me 50 tries, but that's surprisingly not true at all. This fight was actually pretty easy. Whenever he went for double death flies or Maggie Dolan, it didn't do enough damage to kill the party. In fact, the only party member that went down at all during this fight was Daisojo, but I just summoned Giramakala in his place and use him to pass turns. Also, to my surprise, he actually only goes for double death flies or Maggie Dolan a few times. Most of the time, he'd either go for his normal attack or use Mazeodyne or Mazondyne. All of these are reflected or drained by Mother Harlot, and she seems to be his favorite target for his normal attack too. He even uses Dekaja and Dekunda a couple of times, even though I haven't been using buffs. Also, despite being resisted, my physical attacks still do a decent amount against him. Usually 400 with Divine Shot after a focus, and even resisted magic wasn't bad, doing around 1 to 200 per hit. The only real problem I had was the amount of HP he has. He does take quite a beating before going down, and my demons actually run out of MP a couple of times. Thankfully, I still have plenty of great chakras and soma drops left over for future bosses, but this is definitely the most of these I've had to use in a single fight. It does take a couple of dozen turns, but without any real issues, Beelzebub gets squashed. Oh, and after the fight is over, Demifiend levels up and learns Life Surge, which brings his HP to over 900. Now, behind Beelzebub, there's a door containing a bunch of mystic chests, and in them are some sweet rewards that we can collect. But even though Beelzebub is dead, we're not done with the Kalpa just yet, though thankfully the Cursed Hallway is no longer cursed. We actually got a backtrack to the Cursed Hallway from the second Kalpa, where Efri tells us about his friend who has a key we need. The friend he's talking about is Loki, so we ask him about it, find out he sold it to the junk shop mannequin in Asakusa, and then we go back to the Amala Labyrinth, open up the locked door in the third Kalpa, 
go down to the fourth, flip the switch, go back up through the third, into the fourth, and then we finally make it to the fifth Kalpa. What was the point in making me do that? Anyway, at the bottom, Lucifer explains the truth about the fiends in Hijiri, and finally we can continue to the fifth Kalpa, and thankfully we don't need to do anything before entering, we can just walk right in. And as soon as we set foot inside, we're greeted by our good friend Raido Kuzanoa the 14th, and he offers to join our party. Now, if you played the original US version, you may remember that before joining, Dante decided a fee based on a coin toss. Well, here it's replaced with tossing Mahjong tiles, but in this case, Raido actually pays you. If you guess wrong, he pays you one Maka, but if you guess right, he'll pay you 100,000. We guess correct, meaning we get some money and one of the best demons in the game. Well, not really a demon, but still a great party member. Now, just like his boss fight, model, name, and animations aside, Raido is identical to Dante in pretty much every way. However, there is one difference that makes Raido infinitely better. Unlike Dante, his booster skill also comes with Pierce. That's right, the skill of the Aeon not only boosts the power of his attacks, but it also gives them all a Pierce effect, meaning we can now have two party members with Pierce effects without having to do a crazy amount of grinding. Sadly, we don't start with it, but you'll learn it before we really need it. Anyway, there are a lot of cool things in the 5th Kalpa. At a certain point, you'll get to a door that won't open unless you have a demon with 25 strength. Inside here, there's another door that will only open if you show it the demon that's been with you the longest. Now, remember in the beginning when I said to hang on to that pixie you got? Well, if you present it to this door, you'll go inside and she'll turn into a super pixie. A level 80 pixie with 30 in every stat and a bunch of really good moves. Thanks to her, we can get through pretty much every other door in here. However, there are two doors we can't get in because they require specific demons, those demons being Beelzebub and Metatron, but in order to get them, we have to be at least level 95, and I honestly just don't think what they have is necessary. So, after getting what I need, it is then time to fight the boss of the fifth Kalpa, Metatron, who is here to kill us because we are assisting Lucifer and he doesn't like that. Even though the other angels are siding with Chiaki, Metatron still seems to be loyal to God. Now, out of all the bosses I've fought so far, Metatron is the one I'm at the biggest disadvantage in. Just like Beelzebub, he resists everything except one element, that element being ice. I don't have any ice attacks, so I have no choice but to hit him with resisted physical moves. What really puts us at a disadvantage is that he also likes to use buffs, mostly Makakaja, but sometimes debilitate. And to make matters worse, his only magic attacks are almighty, Megidolon and his signature move, Fire of Sinai. Fire of Sinai is his most threatening because it deals severe almighty damage to random targets and can easily kill our demons in one hit if he gets the double hit on any of them, which is even worse if he uses Makakaja or Debilitate beforehand. Oh, and he also has Mahama on, but he doesn't seem to go for it much, even though I wish he would. So yeah, this fight is basically Beelzebub on steroids, and my lack of ice magic just makes everything take so much longer. All I can do is just chip at him with physical attacks and hope he doesn't get the double hit on anybody with Fire of Sinai. The first attempt goes okay, but then he gets a few lucky Fire of Sinai's and starts killing my party members. I don't have time to revive them because if I don't cancel his buffs or debuffs, he'll kill us. But I also need to have more party members to be able to do damage and stay alive. At the end of the fight, as I'm desperately trying to get back on my feet, he uses Debilitate and then Fire of Sinai and obliterates what is left of my party. So let's try that again. As usual, it's the same strategy, but I just hope I get luckier. And thankfully, that's what happens. He still does most of the same BS he did in the first attempt, going for Makakaja and Taryukaja, but not as much Debilitate, and he doesn't go for Double Fire of Sinai or Megidolon. When he does go for Fire of Sinai, it mostly gets our party members once, and he also seems to like going for his normal attack. He doesn't hit Mother Harlot like I hope he would, but I'll gladly take a normal attack over anything else. That's pretty much how the fight goes, just doing what I normally do while crossing my fingers. Things do start to look pretty grim toward the end where he starts doing a large amount of damage, but just before he can finish us off, his HP runs out and we are done with the fight. <laughs> Now, with Metatron out of the way, 
we are finally in the bottom of the Amala Labyrinth and have come face to face with Lucifer himself. He explains to us his plan, tells us what we need to do, and now we are officially locked into the true demon ending. And now it is time to go to the final dungeon. We have come all the way across Tokyo, we've beaten all the fiends, completed all the Kalpas, and we've done it all without buffs. And now we are in the last stretch of the game. Only one dungeon left. Time to go and make Lucifer proud.